14. The world became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Advent is a season of expectation and preparation. As we have prepared to celebrate the coming of Christ in his incarnation, we have lit candles to remember that Jesus fulfills the stories of Israel, God, and the whole world. He is greater than all the kingdoms of the earth. Tonight, we celebrate that Jesus is born king of heaven and earth. Not even heaven could contain its joy as the Son of God stepped into his own creation, taking on human flesh in order to establish God's kingdom on earth and save us from our sins. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we give thanks that you have not left this world in darkness, but have sent your eternal Son as light of the world. Help us to see your glory and receive your new life, which brings us joy. Open our eyes to see Jesus more clearly, to trust him more fully, to serve him more joyfully, and to Find our satisfaction in Him. And all the children say, Amen. 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 And so I would say to you that on a very special occasion like this, <coughs> on a very special occasion like this, I, I normally sit down weeks before and, and prepare a very special prayer. I talk in my head and know exactly what I want to say. And even though I, I made an effort to do that, it came to me that maybe something special has already been created. And so I would say to you that uh, maybe the prayer that you might listen to tonight is called the Christmas Prayer, written by one very great author, Robert Louis Stevenson. Will you pray with me once again? Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels the gladness of shepherds and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessings which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning Make us happy to be thy children. 
and Christmas Eve, bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> So I'm going to invite all the young people to come forward. We're just gonna ask you, gonna ask you to kind of sit around and I want to read to you the Christmas story. We hear it every year, we can almost say it from memory. But I won't. census that took place, place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everybody went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. That means he went home. That means that he went to the place where his family was raised. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and she was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So listen to this. They found a place out back of a motel in a manger. You know what a manger is? What is it? Exactly right. It's a food trough. It's where the cows and the horses, and, well, it's too, too high for the pigs, but it's just kind of like a little wedge thing that they put hay in so they can hold it for the horses and the cows. That was baby Jesus' bed for that night. Now, can you think about a five-star hotel, that means a really expensive room with the big king-size bed and the fluffy pillows and the big screen TV and an ice bucket for your cold drink. That's not what it was. This was a barn, and barns in those days were just places like caves hollowed out of a rock with hay bales all inside so that the, the uh, animals could eat. That's where they stayed. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It made me think that 
across the street is Mr. Reuben, and he's got all of those goats, and his son-in-law has all of those big cows, and they live right across the street from us. And sometimes Mr. Reuben, even though he's an older guy, has to get in his little uh, John Deere thing and go out into the fields and take care of his, his goats and his cows. So this is what was going on. I'm afraid to do this. Yes? Um, maybe Jesus was born on Christmas. You're exactly right. You're right with me. Let's continue. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, there will be a Savior born to you. He is the Christ. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Come on, I it. <coughs> Suddenly there was a great company of heavenly hosts appearing and with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. They were singing like angels everywhere. It's like a big concert of angels singing that. Yes. Way to go. So you've already heard this story. And when the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off to find Mary and Joseph and the baby was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Yes. Boy, that's a big discussion. The truth is that Christmas Day was decided by the church people years after Jesus was born. They don't really know exactly what time it was, what day, what month. The truth is it may have been in the summertime, but the church decided, let's have it on Christmas so we can celebrate then. And so from that point on, all of us who believe in Jesus love to celebrate Christmas because the greatest present that we have ever received is the baby Jesus. Yes? So, the story that we read out of the Bible is the same story we read every year so we can remember how great it is to have God come to us as a baby, grow up and teach us how to live right and how to treat people. And so with that, we remember every year how important it is to receive God's message. But you know what's more important? To tell other people about God's message. Can we pray one more time? Dear Jesus, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your blessing. And we ask you to fill our hearts. We ask you to fill our hearts. With love. With love. For our families, for our families, for our friends, for our friends, for the world, for the world. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And all the children say, and all the children say, Amen. Great job, thanks. So, <laughs> just loving this service, aren't you, Frank? I just want the attention. I'm back here. Let's, let's hear it. Right. So the message that you received tonight that from the Gospel of Luke is the message that the shepherds received in real life. And what was it that they walked away understanding that they were to do, not just come and worship, 
but to go tell it on the mountain. 